you to turn to the book of Matthew, chapter number 21. And I'm reading from the, uh, let's see what version I'm reading from today. I'm reading from the New King James Version. If you have the King James or if you have another version, it'll probably sound a little bit different but meaning the same thing. Okay, beginning at verse 1. It says, now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. And immediately they will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly, and sitting on a donkey, a coat, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went, and these are Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the cord, laid their clothes upon them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitude who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when they had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. May God add a blessing to his red word. My topic for you today is celebrating your Palm Sunday. Today is what is recognized as Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is celebrated exactly one week before Resurrection Sunday. Now on Palm Sunday, Jesus rode through the town on a donkey with people going before him and people that were going before him putting their clothes in his path, putting palm tree limbs, leaves out for the donkey to walk on. Now, that was a parade. People were going before him and after him. And look at here. They started in a city called Bethage. And they part, the, the parade went all the way from one city or from one town all the way into Jerusalem. Wow. So that was a parade. And they were praising him. And they were saying, Hosanna. And Hosanna means praise. It means adoration. It means joy. And they call him the prophet of Nazareth. Some call him the son of David. They said that he came in the name of the Lord. Now, large multitudes followed Jesus. Jesus was a very famous uh, person because people followed him. It was 5,000 men in one group plus the women and children, where he fed the 5,000 and, and men, plus the women and children. And then Jesus had people that were thronging him because he was doing the miracles. He was, he was healing the sick. He was giving sight to the blind. He was raising dead. He was doing so many miraculous things that people were just glorifying him. If we ask somebody like that now, means wouldn't you celebrate them? Amen. They celebrate him. And this is what, why we call it Palm Sunday, because it was thousands of people. I believe it was following Jesus. They showed that they loved him. And so they were just following him real close to him and staying with him and, and giving him adoration. But that was on Palm Sunday. Now, a lot happened between Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday. See, on Palm Sunday, they were celebrating him. They were giving him a parade, and they were glorifying him. But during the week, somewhere during the week, now, some people say that uh, Jesus was crucified on Good Friday. Now, some people, if you look it up, you will find that some people say he was crucified on Wednesday. Now, actually, that's what I used to think. He was crucified on Wednesday because Jesus said, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale, three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. Three days and three nights. It's hard to get three days and three nights from Friday evening to Sunday morning. 
But then when you look at it on Wednesday, after I did some study, I mean, I, I thought I had studied it all good. But when you look at it, if he was crucified on Wednesday, you see all your facts got to get, come together because they say he was raised on the third day. If, you, if he were crucified on Wednesday, then Sunday wouldn't have been the third day. Sunday would have been what? The fourth day. Okay, now there are some that believe he was crucified on Thursday. And after my examination, I'm not teaching on that anymore. I'm just going to leave that alone. But I believe he was crucified on a Thursday. Because, see, the reason they say he was crucified on Friday is because they said they had to take him down the day before the Sabbath. They didn't want his body to be on the cross on the Sabbath day. Now, the weekly Sabbath is what? Saturday. And when does Sabbath day start with the Jewish calendar? Now, see, with our calendar, a day starts when? At 12.01, after midnight, 12.01 is the next day. In other words, this is Sunday, but at 12.01 tonight, it will be Monday. That's how we do our calendar, which came after the Jews, after the, um, the Roman pattern. But the Jewish calendar is different. For instance, the Jews celebrate Saturday as a Sabbath day. Now, when does the Sabbath day start for the Jews? The Sabbath day starts on Friday at sundown. At sundown. Because, see, the way we do it in America and almost all over the rest of the world, we say the morning and the evening is the day because morning come first and then evening. But with the Jews, the evening start first. If you read in the Bible, you'll say, you felt what say, the evening and the morning was the first day. The evening and the morning was the second day. So the day starts in the evening. So Friday, what we call Friday evening is what the Jews call Saturday evening. Because after sundown, it's evening time. And after sundown, the day started. So what we call in Friday evening, they actually call it Saturday evening because the evening is what starts the day. So when you look at the Jewish calendar and you look at the way we do it, it can get to be confusing. Now, the reason I say that he was probably crucified on Friday, on Thursday, which a lot of other people have also, because if you look it up, Google can tell you all different ways. If some people believe Wednesday, some believe Thursday, some believe Friday. And the reason the one they believe from Friday is because they wanted to make sure his body was down before the Sabbath day. And they, and we know that the Sabbath day, the weekly Sabbath, is what? Saturday. So that means they had to take him down on Friday evening, which would be what's called Good Friday. But what, the, what people don't look at is the, the, um, the Jewish people have more than one Sabbath. See, on Saturday is just the weekly Sabbath. But then if you go to Leviticus, you will find that there are about 71 Sabbath days in the Jewish calendar. And the Passover, which is the time when Jesus was being crucified, was a Sabbath day. So they had two Sabbath days that week instead of one. And when you look at the Bible, it said this Sabbath was a high day. It was a holiday. It was not the regular Sabbath day. And that would have been on Thursday. And so I, don't, I got to the point where I don't debate it anymore. I just say he was crucified. Amen. He might have been crucified on Wednesday. He might have been crucified on Thursday. He might have been crucified on Friday, but he was crucified. Amen. So that's what I dwell on, the fact that he was crucified. And, but, but the thing I want to bring to you is they were celebrating him on Sunday, but something happened on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. That changed the celebration. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I just want you to know that this way. There's going to be a time when people are going to celebrate you. No matter what, I, I thank the Lord for the celebrations. We're going to celebrate pastor's appreciation on the fourth Sunday. We celebrate our birthday. People come around and, and when you do good things, people give you accolades. That's your, Sabbath, that, that's your, that's your Palm Sunday. But you better believe Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday coming. It's coming. Celebrate whenever your time to celebrate, but don't get stuck on the celebration.
Because just like Palm Sunday came on Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday going to be some good Friday days. It's going to be some persecution days. Hallelujah. But see, the good news is, while the people were celebrating him on Palm Sunday, you had the haters that was planning his death during the week at the same time. Because see, the Jewish leaders, were they were jealous, and they were planning on how to crucify him all the time. So at the same time he was being celebrated, somebody else was planning his, his demise. Yeah. Same thing with you. Amen, amen. You got people celebrating you, and just because you do good don't mean everybody going to like you. And just because somebody's celebrating you now don't mean those same people that were celebrating you on Palm Sunday might be saying crucify him on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. My point is this. The whole while, the people that loved him was celebrating him, and the people that didn't love him was planning his death, God already had a resurrection in mind. Amen. Don't focus on the people that's, 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 that's praising you. Don't focus on the people that's criticizing you. You focus on the one that's planning your resurrection. God always got a way out for you. Keep your eyes on God. Hallelujah. No matter what you're going through. And so don't get stuck on it. It don't matter. Every now and then, I, I, I got where I'm real bad at name calling. But I heard Bishop T.D. Jakes say that he was in Atlanta one day. And he walked down the street, and there was a guy pulled over. When he got to the curb, a guy pulled over in his car and said, There you are, you Bishop Jakes. I recognize you. you just one of those preachers that's one of the scam people. You just try to get people money. You're up to no good. That's all you want to do is get people money. He jumped in his car and left. Bishop said he kept walking. When he got to another corner, somebody swung around and, put, and jumped out of the car and said, Hey, you Bishop Jakes. Man, you were a blessing. You've been a blessing to me. You were a blessing to my family. You just did things that helped my life. And so one man gave him praise. Another man gave him criticism. He said, but I didn't pay no attention to either one of them. Amen. Because you can't get hooked up on praises because your praises will lift you up. And you get prideful. And don't get stuck on your haters because they're going to hate you. You can't afford to let people that talk negative about you pull you down. You got to have your mind made up, know who you are. See, I'm the same man. Whether you criticize me or whether you praise me, I got to know who I am. And when I look in the mirror, I want to like what I see. That's the one I got to impress. Like what, what, what Pastor Michael Jackson said, the man in the mirror. Amen. That's the one. <laughs> That's the one you got to look at. You need to make sure you live in your life in a way that you feel good about who you are. And don't let the way you feel about yourself be determined by how somebody else feel about you. Amen. Keep your eyes on Christ. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what day of the week he was crucified. What matters is he was crucified. And Jesus said, no man take my life. He said, I lay it down. And I have the power to take it up again. See, and what, and what happened, they were planning his trial. They couldn't just grab him and, and crucify him. They had to have a trial. So in the trial, they tried to come up with all kind of trumped up charges. But they could not never get two people to agree. So what they did, they had somebody came up and said, he claimed to be the son of God. That's blasphemy. So they, they, they crucified him on the charge of blasphemy. But Jesus told him, say, say, say the, the scripture says, he, he gave him Psalms 82. Psalms 82 say, you are, you are children of God. You are gods and children of the most high. So it was talking about the people of God. God called you gods. Did you know that? You know why God called you gods? Because you are his offspring. And whatever you sprung off of, that's what you are. So when you get born again, you become a part of the family of God. And God look at you as children of God. And if you're children of God, then you are gods. And Jesus said, the scriptures say you are gods. So why are you getting upset at me? Because I say I'm the son of God. So they trumped up these, child, these, these charges, and then they crucified him. But I want you to know that no matter what they trump up against you, 
no matter what the haters bring against you, you need to keep your eyes on God. Because see, after the trial, after the crucifixion, always come the resurrection. Amen, amen. Focus on the resurrection. Amen. Always focus on God. People change, but God always stays the same. I believe those, some, some of those same people that was marching in front of him and those that were marching behind him, those that were laying down their clothes and saying, Hosanna to the highest, was probably in the crowd that said, crucify him. I thank God when people give me accolades. I mean, I do, but I don't get stuck on it. People tell me a lot of times, you know, how about how they're blessed with the ministry and all that. And I thank the Lord for that. And I thank the Lord because the ministry is supposed to change people's lives. But I don't get stuck on that. Amen. And I thank God for them. But everybody that pats you on the back is not your friend. Sometimes the same one that pats you on the back will stab you in your back. So what you got to do is you got to focus on God who is always on your side. Amen. Amen. And, you know, and I want to tell you this. When you mess up, God don't kick it to the curb. Amen. But he will chastise you. Yes, and the Bible said we will endure chastisement, that he will treat us like sons. So what happens when we do wrong, if you are saved, you're not going to feel comfortable in your sin. If you are saved, you will not feel comfortable in your sin. And God will use that discomfort to chastise you. God does not chastise his children with, with sickness and diseases. God will chastise you with a grieving in your spirit. You won't be able to sleep like you should sleep. You won't be able to do the things you used to do because there's a conviction spirit that'll be upon you. And that's how God will chastise you. And then sometimes the, door, the, 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 the God don't have to do anything to you. But let me tell you this, if God stepped back, the devil will step in. Amen. So what you need to do is stay with God. And when you mess up, and all of us do at some time, be quick to repent. Amen. Right. Amen. The Bible says we endure chastisement. God treat us like sons. And my sons, both of them, and, and my sons in the married into the family, none of them perfect. But I ain't kicking none of them to the curb. Amen. And when they're wrong, I'm going to say you're wrong. I'm not going to tell you you are right just because you my son. I'm not going to do that. Because, see, I can't side with you against God. Amen. And God is going to be right all the time. Yes. Now, I love you all the time. Yes. But let me tell you, I'm not going to side with what's wrong. Amen. Amen. My wife just reminded me I got three. Actually, I got four. Four sons. And my oldest son back there, uh, he told me his wife had to chastise him because he fell short on my birthday gift. Amen. I told him, I said, well, listen to your wife. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we all going to have some Palm Sundays when everything looks good and people are praising us. But remember, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Good Friday is coming. But so is Sunday. So is your resurrection. So is your recovery. Amen. You got a resurrection day coming, no matter what you're going through. I thank the Lord that um, we have our sign. The, the, the person that, that did our, we had our sign out front. We had it done over because the letters and things were fading on it. And so I had them to print the new, some of y'all even know we got a new sign because the same sign, the old sign, the new sign looks just alike. It's just that the letters have been made better. But we made it with the wrong kind of material so the light wouldn't be able to shine through. So we had to get another one made. But I used the other one. If you would notice, we got a sign on the side of the road over here. And I call it the inspirational sign. So we can put some inspirational things on there so when people come by, they can read something. Somebody might be going through a bad day. And sometimes just one word sometimes can help pick you up. Amen. So I use that as our inspirational word. And I try to listen to the Lord as to what to put on there. And the Lord told me to put these words, hold on, your change is coming. Hold on, your change is coming. And, and I didn't know I was going to be preaching about this today. Amen. If your Wednesday show up, hold on. Your Thursday shows up, hold on. Your Good Friday shows up, hold on. 
You're going through hardships, hold on. You're going through denial, nobody want to talk to you, nobody want to help you, hold on. You're going through financial problems, hold on. You're going through sickness, hold on, because your change is coming. Yeah. Amen. You got to remember that God, what God said, my thoughts for you are for good and not evil that you might have an expected end. And if I don't get the end that God said I'm supposed to have, I'm going to hold on. Hold on. Your change is coming. This life is filled with seasons. You're going to have seasons of, of good things. You're going to have seasons of bad things. So don't get stuck on the seasons. When things are going good, give God praise. But prepare yourself for your good Friday. Amen. Prepare yourself because everybody, life don't stay the same all the time. But then when your good Friday come, when the, when the, when the, when the, the people are criticizing you and they want to put you to death, you still hold on because you got a resurrection. That's why you got to focus, not focus on what you're going through, but focus on what you're going to. And I'm going to my resurrection. Next week, we're going to talk about the resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So we thank God for Jesus. And I just want to encourage you, if you just stay with God. You see, in this life, we have different seasons where things are going good and you can have a season where things are going bad. But let me tell you this, if you just hold on, a day is coming when there ain't going to be no more Palm Sundays, won't be no more Good Fridays, won't be no more resurrections. Every day is going to be the same. Every day is going to be the same. In the book of Revelation 21 and verse 4, if you just hold on to the end, it says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There should be no more pain, for the former things are passed away. That's what we're looking for. Hold on. Hold on. Keep your confidence in God. Hold on to his word. One day is going to be like every day. Every day going to be praise the Lord. Every day going to be hallelujah. Every day going to be thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep your confidence in God. Hold on to his word. Listen to his Holy Spirit. Let it lead you. Let the Holy Spirit work in you. Let the word of God work in your life so you can remain steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. The devil don't like it when you start abounding. When you abound, that means you're growing. And things that used to bother you last year won't bother you this year. Things that used to bother you last week won't bother you this week. Why? Because you have a bound. You've grown past that. Tell the devil you got to come with something different now. Hallelujah. I got victory over this. And I got victory over that. And I'll get victory over the next thing to come in my life. Hold on. Hallelujah. Look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Father God, we thank you right now in the name of your son, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. And Father God, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Father God. Keep us encouraged. Let us know, Lord God, that this life is full of seasons and ups and downs and all kind of things are going to happen in this life. But you are there with us in the ups. You are there with us in the downs. And you will help us. You will deliver us. You will cause us to walk in victory. Even in the hardest times, we can still have hope because we know that our resurrection day is coming. We know our recovery is coming. We know your word is going to work in our lives. So we thank you for it right now. Now, if there be somebody in here that don't know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior in your life, you know, it's a lot of people that, like I was, went to church, grew up in church, joined the church at an early age, but you never had a experience with Jesus Christ where you developed a personal relationship with him. The Bible says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that he will save you. When he saved you, that word save means deliver you. He'll deliver you from the power of sin. He'll deliver you from the bondage of sin. He'll help you to have a brand new life in Christ Jesus. God love you. He made salvation easy. People try to make it hard, but God made salvation easy because he wants you to have it. Jesus already died for every sin that you have ever committed. 
And God know the secret sins, the things that nobody don't know. You think nobody don't know, but you and God. God know about them, but he already loved you. And he already forgave you. And he already paid the price. You just have to accept it. That's why he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open up, I'll come in. And I'll sup with him, and he can sup with me. God love you. There's nothing you can do to stop God from loving you. Let him love you enough to save you. This is your opportunity. We're going to ask everyone to stand, if you will. And as our choir sing, <clears throat> we're going to give you the opportunity to make a confession. Let the world know that you made a decision, that you're going to let Jesus Christ be the Lord in your, of your life from now on. And don't worry about whether or not you can live a Christian life because nobody can on their own. Whenever you come to Christ, he puts his spirit into your spirit, which enables you to do what you could not do on your own. All that cussing you used to do, are you still doing it now? He'll set you free. Amen. Amen. He can give you, he can, he can set you free from alcoholism with not just 12 steps, but one step. Amen. Amen. And I'm not knocking the other people and doing what they're doing. I'm just telling you the power of God in your life if you will receive it. Jesus Christ changed lives. The only thing is he won't make you do it. You got to exercise your will. The Bible says whosoever will, let them come. You got to make up in your mind. I'm not, I don't like the way I'm living because of the way I'm living, I'm going to end up in hell. I don't like the way I'm living because I'm in bondage. I want to be free. Jesus said whosoever the son sets free is free indeed. No matter what have you bound, he can set you free. And once you give your life to him, what he will do is he will, he, 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 he was the one that said, upon this rock I build my church. It's the church responsibility to help you grow. But it's your responsibility to show up. You don't have to be defeated by the devil, by the world, or by your own fleshly desires. I just want you, this is your chance. Would you take a bold step today and say, I'm going to choose Jesus. This is your opportunity. The Bible says no man can come except the Father draw him. That means God tugging at your heart right now. He's drawn, but you have to submit. If you feel that urgency that you need to come, that ain't nothing but the devil trying to hold you back. He want to keep you in bondage, but God wants you free. In your glory. This is your opportunity. Would you come? Would you make a conscious decision today to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior in your life? There may be some that know you have fights me. You know, at one point you were saved. At one point you were living for God. But now you find yourself back into what you came out of. God says, return to me, and I will return to you. This is your opportunity. Withholding nothing, I surrender, I surrender all to you. Will you surrender? Everything, everything I give to you. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Opportunity, would you come? Withholding I know God drawing somebody. I know He's drawing. You. I surrender all. Don't resist. I God loves you. All He's drawing. He's pulling. To you. Don't fight against God. Everything I give. Everything I give to you. Withholding. If you desire prayer. Something that you're going through, just want somebody to agree with you. The Bible lets us know that we're two or three together, together in my name, I'm in the midst. There's power in united prayer. You may be going through something in your family, and you just want to intercede for them. We give you the opportunity to come. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. You have an ache or pain in your body, and you believe God 
God for healing. The Bible said that Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He's still a healing God. He's still a delivering God. He's still a God that can meet your need. I belong to you, Lord. The Bible says the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise them up. If you have an ache or pain in your body, if you got a sickness in your body, don't be satisfied. Trust God to drive it out, and God will. He's able to do it. Self away, so you don't let the devil cheat you out of your blessing. God got a blessing with your name on it. Don't let the devil cheat you out of your blessing. Don't let fear cheat you out of your blessing. Give myself away. Don't let shyness so cheat you out of your blessing. God want to bless you. God want to meet your needs. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. Come on and declare. My life, my life is not my own. To you, to you, there's a wonderful I atmosphere in this morning. God want to save. God want to heal. God want to deliver. This is the right atmosphere right now. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place right now. My life is not my own. To you, to you, I belong. I give myself, Father God, we thank you so much for being a God that looks beyond our faults and see our needs and meet our needs, not according to what we deserve, but according to your riches and glory, by Christ Jesus, our Lord. We're going to lead our Facebook group, our YouTube family, and we're going to minister to those around the altar. If you can come to Evergreen Church, we're here, we love you, we'll receive you, and we'll do everything we can to help you to grow in the Lord, because we believe in growing in the Lord, so we can have victory in every area of our life. So we're going to tell you to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. We're going to ask our prayer warriors to come around and help us to pray. With holding nothing.